What's up everyone, it's DV. Today I'm gonna to be going through how to price your items and sell them in Pet Simulator 99. Now, you might be thinking, DV, why do I need this guy? I already know, you just need to go to the trading plaza, set up a booth and sell my stuff. Well, you know, yes, that's true, but not everyone knows how to do that. And two is you may not know how to price your items correctly. So this video, we're gonna be talking about inflation, what inflation means. We're gonna cover supply and demand and how it affects your pricing of your items, like the value at the bottom of this pet and when to use it. A lot of people just use this straight up and they don't realize they're actually hurting themselves and getting scammed because that's not always the actual value of an item. And everyone tries to use this as a guide for pricing and that's the wrong way to do it. I am gonna try my best to do a complete guide for this, but considering the game updates all the time, there might be new changes to how things work. So make sure you turn on notifications so you don't miss out on future videos. Trading is done via the trading plaza, which is accessed via the castle. When you first start PetSim 99, this castle door is gonna be closed. You're gonna see a lock. You do need to rebirth for the first time to be able to unlock this which is at zone number 25 there's your first rebirth right here so you need to reach this zone it's gonna be a gold key in your inventory that it's gonna give and then once you hit uh castle three again you'll be able to use the trading plaza now of course you could use the trading window here so at the bottom here there's a trading icon you could trade with other people um you could toggle like if you're getting too many prompts you can turn that off and maybe if, you know you're getting annoyed with people prompting you to trade all the time you can just turn that off there but uh you just need to go inside the castle and then you can see this glowing area it says trading plaza exchange and sell items if you're new to the game you're only going to see the normal here you're not going to see the pro and as it says right here the pro plaza requires five huges or one titanics the only difference between these is these are going to be richer players you're going to find a lot more huges you're going to see titanics there normal is pretty much where all the newbies are <laughs> who don't have five huges yet doesn't mean there's bad deals here doesn't mean there's no deals here just means there's less of these items there um i also did notice that you're going to be able to sell your huges a lot more inside normal servers at times at least the beginner huges so there are pros and cons of both of these for me i typically stick with the pro server now of course the other place you can trade at is going to be the discord so on the official big games discord you're going to see there is a trading category here you might need to like make sure you like validate there might be like some access things here because i think you have to go to browse channels or something you kind of like pick where you you know what channels you want to see but under trading if you go to petsim 99 you'll see all these trade listings you do have to be careful though i have to say with trading because there are big scammers here i pretty much try to avoid these at all costs if i can i like to trade in the trade plaza just because one it takes a lot longer to trade two you need to know your prices and it takes just long to negotiate you got to go dm people back and forth in some cases you get better deals here by far like you can get like really good deals because people are selling they're trying to sell in bulk sometimes sometimes you got your power traders that just live and breathe this server so if you want to buy like 20 of something they might give you better deals because you're doing volume but then you got like scammers like this person here that has a little green leaf you got to be careful with these if you didn't watch my scam video on what the scams to watch out for um definitely watch that so you don't get scammed but not only can you get scammed but you can get hacked all it takes is for them to send you a link to a server and you get hacked because a lot of the times the links that they're sending to you look like real roblox links but they're actually hack sites so they cookie log you and then they hack your account and take over and then you lose everything i would recommend not using discord unless you know exactly what you're doing if you're you know smart you're internet savvy savvy you know how to avoid getting um you know scammed but this person right here the obvious the telltale signs is that they've got a huge happy rock for 1 million no one's selling huge happy rocks for 1 million that's just an obvious obvious like no brainer no one's selling these you know types of prices so that's a block now my server also has a trading channel you can check out at discord.gg slash tv plays but beyond that that's as much as discord we're going to be using except for maybe some price checks we're going to talk about in a little bit so once you enter the trading plaza you're going to see a number of things you're going to see the trading terminal here we're going to talk about that in a second you'll see a bunch of booths over here and then you can also see there's a auction you'll want to go and find an empty or transparent booth to claim it says unclaimed booth to e you can claim it and now you can start listing your items we're going to talk about pricing in a little bit but you can pretty much list four items at once so if i wanted to sell these i'm just going to overprice them because i don't want to sell them right now so we'll just do two million each i want to hold on to these but you can set your price you can also abbreviate by the way so you don't have to spell out so you know if it's just easy easier you just do 2m if you wanted something for 2000 just do 2k and so on so or one bill but uh you could also do t for trillion 
but uh, we're just going to do two mil. So once you hit the limit, it's going to prompt you to get booth tickets. Now, booth tickets you can get either by trading. So if I wanted to find some more of them, you could, or you could just buy them with Robux. So you can go over to the exclusive shop and scroll down to get booth tickets right here. There's 75 Robux each. I don't remember the maximum of these, but I think you get like something like 20 slots. My alt has max. So there is a maximum that you can have. Let me go show you where you can get more tickets though. If you want to do it, you can use the trading terminal. So this is something we're going to go into a little bit more detail on, but you can go over here and you can go to items and then you can see there's booth slot voucher. So you can just go to the server that's selling them and you can see we can buy a booth ticket if we wanted to. That's just a voucher for more slots. So if you want more slots, you can do that. And then of course you can go shop around everyone else's spots. Not, not rocket science. Now, another component to the trading plaza is the auction system if you want something you can place bid and then you got to put a bid amount it's always going to be more than the previous bidder but the starting bid you can just match so the other thing is if you want to be able to list auctions yourself you do have to rebirth twice now only certain items can be listed as an auction so for example um you're not going to be able to do some of these items like legendaries they have to be mythical you can't do locked items so if you want to be able to do these items like these huges you have to unlock them prior or else they're going to get blacked out like that yeah, so some things are just not auctionable, though. I noticed uh, Coin's Charm Mythical here is auctionable. Divine is superior. But some mythical items you can't, like you can see Coin's uh, 5 we can't do. Also, you can see there's different booths. So we got different booth frames. If I go over here and claim a booth, I can go into that booth and I can exit the booth if I want to, you know, if I want to close it or I can customize it. Clicking on that gives you different options. Some of these are exclusives. So that's how you change the booth. You can also get more booth uh, frames here. And get them through achievements so a lot of these achievements grant you a booth so this one right here is the hippo melon booth you can also get a uh, gold booth here there's no functional differences with the frames it's just cosmetics and of course you can just buy them from other players that are trading them let's move on to trading terminal because this is a really powerful tool they just added to the game and if you're looking for an item you can go into the terminal you can click on pets to find pets um these things are uh this is like normals there's a golden rainbows here and then of course you got rainbow shinies and if you want uh say like golden shiny just click that and you can see the golden shinies if you just want normal shinies just go to the normal and that's a normal shiny just toggle off the shiny if you don't want it to be shiny anymore and uh over here are the different items these are all the items you can buy or find you got potions all the different item types you got eggs here we'll try hubert there we go. We found a server with Hubert. So it's going to teleport us to the marketplace or trading plaza that has a Hubert for sale. If it teleports you right here, but not to a booth, it means it's in the auction. So make sure you're keeping an eye on the auction. Might be available currently. Also, of course, there's a mailbox. I wouldn't recommend using that for trading. Let's just not talk about that. But you could use that for uh, trades if you wanted to. Uh, I would, like I said, I wouldn't recommend it. So before we get into pricing your items, we first need to understand the types of traders there are because there's all kinds of traders in the game looking for different things. So the first type of trader we're going to talk about is the value value flipper these are people who just want the best deal they can get uh flipper is someone that resells so it's kind of like uh house flippers if you've ever heard of them they'll buy a house in real life and fix it up and then flip it for more money so that's kind of what we're talking about the next type of trader is a rarity and value collector so these players care more about cereals so when i say cereals i'm talking about uh things like this this is my huge dragon my rainbow one only 210 exists so it's already rare right there's not that many of them out there if i had uh say something like this the huge crown only 170 out there it's a serial 178 i don't know how that works but maybe some got deleted or something or maybe they never got claimed i don't know what happened there this is a very rare pet now it does the same amount of damage as everything else right like it's just a uh, huge it looks like just another cat there's so many other cat huges but this is a very rare cat and that's why it goes for a lot now someone looking for their first huge doesn't care about crown cat okay they're not even looking for a volume of huges they don't want like a bunch of them they just want the most rare ones the next type of trader we're gonna go after is kind of me like i go in this category and i'm looking for you know higher damage so i'm looking for rainbows more than i am looking for say rarity so if you offered me one huge cat or a uh, huge crown cat i'm probably gonna reject it because i want more volume i don't want to have to trade all my huges out just to be able to have one huge that's the difference is people that just want to have high damage they're going to be going after you know rainbow exclusives they're going to be going after maybe titanics um rainbows goldens shiny goldens because they want that damage it's not for the value it's for the damage like i don't care if i'll 
all my pets are hell rocks and happy rocks, you know? It's all about the damage. The next type of trader are the traders who just want to collect the cutest of the cutest. So someone that likes like, maybe they just want to collect all. The I actually had someone that paid a lot for my shiny hippo melon because they said, I love hippo melons. That was their thing. They wanted all the hippo melons. And so, you know, you can see the value on this is really high and it's because everyone likes hippo melons. So visually speaking, like this huge nightmare kraken is kind of cool, but not my favorite. But I might keep stuff just because it looks cool. Like I like the look of it. And so, for example, my Titanic, I don't have him on this account right now. My um, Nightmare Cat, it's on my alt right now. But my Nightmare Cat, I overpaid because I really wanted that Nightmare Cat. I didn't care about the stats. I didn't care about the rarity. I just really wanted that pet. So that is another trader looking for things that they like. Maybe it's a cat collector. Someone wants to collect all the cats. Someone that wants to collect snakes. Like, that's why I have the King Cobra is I like snakes. You know, things like that. Or someone that likes, you know, ponies or horses. Or maybe someone likes the Dominus. They want all the Dominus or the Agonies. Kind of have to think about that when you're selling stuff some people don't just want value and then of course you have people who just want their first huge um they don't really care or even just their first titanic those are people that would be just happy with the huge happy rock they don't always know their prices and they might buy something for overpay just because they want it and it's available those are going to typically be found in the normal servers so if you're trying to like sell your hell rocks you're probably going to have a better chance selling these especially if it's just slightly overpay inside the normal servers and then you have the clan war battlers so right now as of this video we do have a clan where this is a new year clan battle where everyone's trying to hatch you know pets because you have to hatch the most active huge pets this is when you have a buyer who is trying to go after everything to give them an advantage to hatch pets so as soon as this happened the huge uh hunter item here which i have a bunch of right after the update um i was buying them at two million basically double the value of the item and now they're going for a lot typically you'll find them for five mil and then after this event's over no one's gonna be looking for them i mean no one's gonna really care as much they're gonna flood into the marketplace and the value is going to diminish very quickly because of that. And of course, you know, most people who are trading, they kind of cross over all of these categories. It's not just one. So it's not like I just fit into one of these categories. Um, sometimes I cross over or I change my mind. Maybe I got to a point in the game where I am rich enough to just buy something really rare. And so you're going to cross over sometimes between these categories. Now that you understand the types of traders, let's talk about what moves the economy and prices. Like how do prices get changed? Because, you know, one day you'll see a huge going for like four million. The next day, it's worth like 7 million. And you're wondering what happened. It was just like a week ago that this huge pet was worth 4 mil. So there's three big components to pricing. And the first is going to be supply. Second is going to be demand. And third is going to be inflation. Basically, how valuable are gems? First, we're going to cover supply. Supply means how many of something is available in the economy or the marketplace for circulations. We'll first cover this one because it's an older huge. So there are 8,400 of these. Supply is decent, right? 8,400 is pretty good. But over time, players, you know, kind of stop playing. So supply is going to diminish over time, right? It's not going to be in circulation in the marketplace anymore. Supply isn't 8,400. That doesn't mean you can just go and buy 8,400 of these if I wanted to. It means there were 8,400 in existence. And over time, the supply diminishes because people stop plane so you have all these gargoyles in accounts just being stored but not in circulation for sale so you could have a really really old pet so say like this huge dragon there's probably only like 10 out there or five out there because it's old a lot of players just aren't playing the game anymore maybe they stopped playing roblox maybe they stopped playing pet sim in general and they've forgotten about their accounts so supply is that or you know say the uh a good example is the titanic presence this is going to continue to go down in supply over time because people are opening them so same with the eggs any of the old eggs the supply goes down because people open them them. So they go out of the game and can't be purchased anymore. Present, for example, is going to continue to go up in value. Same with these. These gifts are always going to be going up in value. See, these are really good ones to hold on to because you can't get any more of them. That's why limiteds are so valuable is because you can't get any more of them, especially the ones that you can open. Then you have demand, which causes the most impact on prices. Um, demand can be caused by multiple things. It could be based on how cool an item is. So for example, I really like the Darkwing here. He looks really cool, right? Like, I mean, he looks like a little bat guy. So you got this guy. Kind of looks like me a little bit, but different colors. You know, he's got a hood. He's got red eyes. How something looks can create demand. A YouTuber can create demand. So say you have a YouTuber that says their favorite uh, Titanic is the Capybara. Then everyone wants a Capybara.
Berry because they want to copy that YouTuber, right? Another thing can, you know, be a feature. So the Titanic Silver Dragon that has flying ability, even though it's not very rare um, compared to a lot of other Titanics, there's high demand on it. So it's going to be worth more than, say, a Fire Dragon. Then you got rarity that's going to drive demand, right? So if something's really rare, it might be of higher interest. Like there's a high demand on the huge crowns. And then, of course, you have power. So if something's really OP, then someone might want it because it's powerful, you know? So someone might want like Lucky Egg 7, for example. So because it's powerful and it's a high end item, it's going to create demand. Everyone's going to want this because it's going to help them. Now let's talk about inflation. You've probably heard this word around and you maybe got question marks like, what do you mean inflation? If you don't know what inflation means, it basically means the value of things went higher than the value of a currency. So inflation happens in real life, say gasoline and milk and bread went up in price, then that's kind of a result of inflation. So right now we're kind of experiencing that a little bit inside our real economy in the US. As you saw, like huge is jumped from 4 million to like 6 million. And then now they're still climbing to 7 million. And this happens with any game. Um, the more players get rich in the game. So a lot of people are getting more, you know, diamonds. You see some people that have like 500 million, 600 million weeks ago. You didn't see that. That was really rare, but it's becoming more and more common. And because it's becoming more common, people can buy more things. And when people are buying more things, what happens? supply diminishes, right? So they're buying stuff up because they're so rich. They can finally afford things. There's not as much of it out there. Also, the game makes more powerful areas for grinding. So we got better areas to grind. We can earn more diamonds per hour. And uh, you can also buy more diamonds. So, you know, you go over to the shop, you get more diamonds for your Robux recently increased. That just keeps injecting more and more gems in the economy, making it so more people can afford things. Whereas before, you know, it wasn't like that. So essentially what's happening is the richer get rich and the poor can't really get much until later and they have to hope that they get something really op that helps them get rich so these three things really change and manipulate the pricing of things so now that you understand how the economy works with this game let's talk about rep so rep stands for recent auction price and don't get confused by this term because once upon a time it did only count auction prices but with the recent update that they made where all items have an rep which includes items you can't even auction they made a change so that the rep is pretty much across all cells including your boots now rep is always going to be behind because an average is always going to be less than the peaks right the peak sell never look at the rep as the value it's a good guide but it's not the absolute i sell stuff way above rep all the time but the issue that happens in the game currently is that most players who don't understand pricing in the game or value, they just come up to a booth like this. They hover over the price and say like right here, they hover over that and say, oh, that's too expensive. It's only worth 517 million. Now, the best way to do your pricing is really to go um, search trades. So like I, I go over here, anytime I'm selling something, I go in here and I go to find people selling and I try to do like five to 10 times to see what people are selling those yeah. items at. This huge dragon right here, it says the RAP is only 25 million. That means someone that didn't understand the value of this item got messed over, they got scammed. So I'm stuck with this RAP at the bottom of this pet that is worth probably closer to, I would say 80 million plus. Um, but the problem is someone that's not educated on the value of things are, going to just read that rap at the bottom and assume that's the value and not buy big problem right so how do you figure out the values one is like i said i go over to the terminals two is you can use price guides so um i would recommend you know checking out like cosmic values or one two three demand um i'll link the price guides in the description if you want to check them out i'm also working on my own price guide so you'll be able to access that just a cross check just another place to reference the values of things the problem with the price guides though is that they're a little slow to update so you'll want to be careful about that with inflation you know i explained inflation is happening very quickly right now so you you gotta be careful with those prices they're probably behind and um i would always recommend pricing higher than you think so how i personally price stuff depends on what i'm selling and i know some people say well db you can sell anything because you're a youtuber the funny thing is is um i don't sell a whole lot on my main account i sometimes do for videos but most of the time i'm selling on my alt because it sells just as easy on my alt um, how I tend to price stuff depends on the item. On my eggs, I generally would just go and cross-check prices. You know, just like I showed you inside the terminal, I'd just go and 
server hop. I check my current server that I'm in because you don't want to be like more expensive than everyone else in the server. So, because that's competition. So these guys are selling them for 1.7. That means I need to be at or below these prices. That's 1.8. In the future, when you're watching this video, you're probably laughing at these prices because these are cheap. 1.6 right here. So yeah, I'd probably want to be around 1.6 if I wanted to sell. Otherwise, I got a server hop. Um, that's just a tip for you. You don't want to be on a server that has cheaper stuff than you. For something like that, I would cross check the value. For a hoverboard, I would cross check the value. Charms, um, you can pretty much look at the REP. It's it's a cheap item. I would probably just go and sell it for REP or below REP because most people are going to only, like I said, use the REP for buying. Over inside the enchants, it depends on the enchants. If it's a really expensive enchant, then I'm probably going to do the cross checks and check Discord as well. Check you know what people are offering on Discord. Um, any anytime you're checking the Discord for um buyers by the way so if someone's saying like buying chest mimic for 20 mil there's a good chance it's worth 30 mil so always use that as a notion people always try to buy for less than it's worth so if someone's buying it for 20 mil 10 mil whatever it is it's probably worth like close to double so for example i might not know the titanic christmas present price right now just because someone else is selling it for some amounts maybe there's only one only one other seller i might overprice it to be like 1.1 million so it says right here the rep says 773 uh thousand each i might sell for 1.5 million and continue to knock it down over time then i'll keep bringing the price down until it sells because there is a resistance point on all prices this is how we figured prices out for islands back in the day so if you're trying to figure out like how to price stuff with no guide and no one really has as the item for sale go really really high like crazy high what would be you know a good amount for that item especially if it's super rare then you're just going to continue to uh price it down to a point uh that it finally sells um not great to do that with rare items i definitely get feedback on that item um, prior to selling it cross check with friends but when you're selling huges, for example, like this right here says 6.4 million are REP for a huge happy rock. This one's selling it for 7 million. Um, if you go around the server, good chance there's more happy rocks available. Let's see. There's another one for 6.65. So this has not sold yet. You can already see that's kind of your uh, bottom currently. Um, if this hasn't sold for 6.65 yet, and you really want to sell yours, then you probably have to sell it for like 6.6. Um, these, as of this video, we're going for like 6.5, by the way. Um, I did sell some for 6.6. In the future, that's not the price, by the way. You can't you can't use this as a price guide. This video is going to be dated by tomorrow. So <laughs> keep that in mind. Anyway, I hope this helped you figure out prices for stuff and how to, you know, sell your items, how to, you know, not get scammed. Um, they recently did a really nice update for anti-scam, which I really like. So as players get close, they, you know, kind of turn invisible and stuff. Really cool update, devs. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments below if this guide helped you because that does help me make future videos like this one. It encourages me. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next vid. Happy grinding. Peace.